Oh, Lorem, wait. Lorem's here. Okay. My train of thought was violently interrupted by a sharp burst of gunfire. It's too bad he got away again, but maybe a written is cut I'm cutting this out. Hold on. Okay, I'm- I'm going back. <laughs> oh. Now, if these theories are true- Oh, we're still talking. <laughs> oh, we finished the chapter. Loss. And passion. Oh, Anna's not alive, though. This is horrible. And there's the gunshots. And is that Sebastian? I can only judge by the colors. I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking hard. I was studying the card. I awoke with my eyes fixed on the ceiling wallpaper. The sense of dread lingered from a nightmare I no longer remembered. How many more times did I see this apartment before I returned to my own world? Or before something happened to me? I got ready for the day and tried to shake off those thoughts. Hey, Ink. And right on the minute. You show up at this time every day, like clockwork. Clocks are reliable, and reliable is good in this line of work. Well said. I've got something for you. An envelope from the facility. Oh, these are results from the test Anna run on my blood. She must have sent this before she was... No, it's no use thinking about that now. Maybe the test results will be able to help us. Let's see. Remarkable similarities in genetic makeup, particularly with the brain structure. <laughs> oh, I suppose this isn't the only reason you're here. The chief will explain everything once you get there. Let's not keep him waiting, shall we? Mmm. 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 <clears throat> music. I don't like this music. Okay. We arrived at a place that would look more like an ordinary house had it not been for its extraordinary size. It reminded me more of a hostel than a family house. Chief. There you are. Wait, weren't you supposed to be with Amira? Luckily, she doesn't work every day of the week. I see. Anyway, we're nearly done here, so I'll keep it short. Razor broke into the hatchery. Okay, good. It was only the one. I mean, not good that they were killed, but it was only one. There was another murder victim, an employee of the hatchery who was on night duty. Her body was found quite away from here. There's evidence of a struggle, but she covered a lot of distance before it was ultimately over. Loud bangs were heard from her area that her body was found, and she has numerous wounds consistent with both the wounds of the previous victims and that of that other weapon he has. By this point, news of the other corpse, news of another corpse didn't have the same impact anymore. She was just another one of Ray's faceless victims. A hatchery? Is that what this building is? Well, not only. It's a council-owned building, and they like to keep everything related to their sector under the same roof. So besides the hatchery, there's also an orphanage and a family clinic inside. Mm. Okay, I don't like where this is going. I really don't like where this is... Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I'm, I'm sure anyone with two brain cells can tell where my head is going and why I'm fucking terrified about what I'm about to find out. There are also offices related to the administration of those services. That reminds me of the production facility. It should. They have a similar management structure. Can we, can we get back to the case? Sorry for the interruption, Chief. Chief? <laughs> Chief Chief? Yep. Wait a minute. If the orphanage is in, if the orphanage is in there, too. There were other casualties, but Razor got something else when he broke in. Generator, as well as a few eggs. Luckily, the power was restored before anything happened to all the other eggs left inside, but needless to say, the parents of the stolen eggs are not going to be happy. Why would he steal eggs in the first place? Maybe you can tell us. That's why you're here, after all. I don't know. I have no idea what he would even do with them. Maybe he wants to use them as a bargaining chip. After all, he still has to make his escape, and the portal is still broken. Do you think he wants to exchange them for safe passage through the portal? Maybe. It's still broken, though, so I'm not sure if that would be much help. Maybe he has the part needed to repair it, and now he has everything he needs to escape. He could trade the eggs for safe passage, fix the portal, and leave. That's not the only possibility. He may not be the only one who broke the portal. He may not be the one who broke the portal. Maybe he thinks you've intentionally sabotaged it so he can't leave, and he feels he needs the eggs as a bargaining chip when you repair it. But if he just wanted to leave, I feel like you could have done that already. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter who sabotaged the portal. We only know that Reza's actions are becoming more and more desperate. He kidnapped defenseless eggs and even used the human weapon. 
Something's clearly going on with him. Maybe it means that he'll slip up soon. Who knows? Maybe he already has. In any case, we're done here. Let's head back to the department and decide what to do next. Hopefully some of the test results will tell us something. Oh, I don't even get to know who it was! Oh, it worries me so much because it said that they covered a lot of distance before they were ultimately ki- Hold on. Too much is lining up in my head. Oh no. Way too much is lining up in my head. Okay, le let me just take a moment. Oops. Let me just take a moment to explain why I'm goddamn terrified of what I think has happened. And I'm going to be a bit of a prick. <laughs> and I'm not going to mention, any I mention anyone's name because I feel like anyone could connect the dots at this point. Oh no. This, this dragon, this female dragon, one of the workers at the orphanage, they were apparently outside, because I don't think they would have made it outside. Maybe they weren't. Maybe they weren't. Let's start with the assumption that they weren't. When Reza broke in and attempted to kill them, they managed to get out and make it a considerable distance before they were killed. Reza has not yet... Oops. Reza has not yet used his gun in one of these killings because he was able to do it easily enough with a knife so that he was quiet. The only reason he would use the gun, I would think, is if they were going to get away. And in that situation, we just so happen to know a pretty fantastic flyer, the rather courageous one that would have done their best to get away and would have potentially been shot for their efforts. And that's where I'm going to leave that. Because I think that if you can't connect the dots at this point, I don't know why you... I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. <sighs> After a brief walk in Bryce's office again, initial test results had already come in, but didn't reveal any insightful or new information. So what do we do now? Go for the timeline again? Not yet. There are a few other things I'd like to take care of first. What do you have in mind? Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. That's a powerful knock. Is it Maverick? It might be Maverick. Come in. Yep. <laughs> How did I know? Maverick, what are you doing here? Chief, can I talk to you? Alone? We're quite busy here, Maverick. What's this about? Reza. Well, you're looking at the Reza task force, so if you have anything to say, you can say it in front of all of us. I see. Any oh, I need to get my Maverick voice back. I have I just gave him the same voice as Bryce at my accident. I think I know where Reza is. You know where Reza is at this very moment. I have good reason to believe I've located his hideout. He could still be there, or he might have already moved on. Damn, Maverick, tell, tell me everything. I've been tracking him for a while now. When he was at the portal a few days ago, I nearly got him and managed to follow him for a while before I lost him. Based on that, and where he's been, and where his victims have been found, I could triangulate his whereabouts. He has to live somewhere, right? He needs a base to hide his generators and everything he's stolen. Bryce cleared out the clutter on a table and smoothed out a map of the town on its surface. I already had a few locations related to- it already had a few locations related to the case marked on it. Show it to me. Prior victims were found here, here, and here. Today's was here. She was following him, likely because she wanted to save the eggs he stole. Oh no. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not gonna say anything else. Not until we find out. This is the path he took from the portal when I followed him a few days ago. So we've established that this is his area of operation. Extrapolate it and we can narrow it down to this. Now, where could he be hiding in this area? He's certainly not within the village's borders, so unless he's decided to live in the wilderness or a hole in the ground, the only option is here. The abandoned farm. When did you figure all this out? Just a few minutes ago. When I did, I immediately came here. Damn it, Maverick, this might be it. Should we send an observation team? As if we had one to spare. Heck, we're going there right now. What about you, Maverick? I'm still on sick leave, remember? Besides, if I saw Razor right now, I'd probably do something I shouldn't. How about you, Ink? Isn't this going to be dangerous? Razor probably won't harm you, as you're the only one he could possibly consider an ally. Good point. 
If anything, with you there, we might be able to convince him to give up. Or we could act like we intend to trade you for the eggs if he tries to use them as a bargaining chip. You're not really going to use me as a ransom, right? We'll see about that. I suppose if it's necessary, I'll have to play along. I've got your back. If there's one thing we could do to make this whole situation even worse, it would be messing up with you. We have the element of surprise if we walk into his base right now, but we risk Reza lashing out with his weapon. If we want to resolve this peacefully, observation is probably the way to go. I guess we won't need ink here for that, though. True enough. Alright, Ink, you stay here and wait for further instructions. We may need you at a moment's notice. Don't do anything without telling us you... Telling us... Without us telling you to, understand? <laughs> I'm sorry, I've developed a horrible stutter. <laughs> okay. Alright then, let's go, Sebastian. After you, Chief. And Maverick, good job. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> I lose my Bryce voice so easily, it's horrible. Shortly after they've vanished, Maverick also turned to leave. Why did it take him a second? <laughs> then I had to wait. Bryce and Sebastian were observing the farm now, and if anything new happened, I would be the first to know. I spent some time looking around Bryce's office, studying all the material he had gathered about the case, though there wasn't any information that I didn't already know. After a few hours, the telephone in, an off in his office rang, and not sure whether the call was intended for me or Bryce, I picked up. Ink? Yes? I think you need to come here. I'll give you the directions. No problem. There you are. So, what happened? A whole lot of nothing. There was no movement to or from the building in the time we've been watching. He usually operates during the night, so maybe he's just asleep? In that case, it'd be best for us to go in before he has a chance to make his escape. Or maybe he's not even in there anymore. He could have seen us and slipped away unnoticed. There's plenty of time to destroy the evidence while you've been waiting here. You're right. Either he's still inside or he's gone and not coming back. Let's go in. What should I do? You're coming with me. Sebastian, you walk around and watch the back of the building, just in case he tries to escape. I'm on it, Chief. I go in and you stay here, alright? What am I even here for, then? You are insurance. If Reza tries to flee and seize you, it might throw him off. You might be able to stop him. Or if we get into a standoff, I can tell him you're here as well. I just don't want you to come inside when it could be dangerous. <sighs> he trusts me. To a certain extent. I don't think he'd hurt me. I'll ask one more time for me to go in first. Why? Maybe I can talk to him and we can figure things out. I don't think he wants to kill me, so even if it doesn't work out, Sebastian and you will still be nearby to catch him. I'll be right behind you then, but do be careful. Thank you. This is almost guaranteed to work out better. We slowly made our way to the front door. I took a deep breath and tried to prepare myself for the possibility of facing Reza. The tense scenarios and things I could say to him rushed through my head as I pressed down on the door handle. The door inched open with a creak, but I noticed a slight resistance and a strange sound that suddenly made me hesitate. Is it rigged? It's rigged. It is 100% rigged. When I looked down to the source of the noise, I saw a taut wire going through the gap in the door, hovering over the floor of the entryway. Okay, I'm so glad I decided to go in first, because, by all means, Bryce probably would have set that off. Oh, I'm so glad I know how to make good decisions sometimes. I am so glad I know how to make good decisions sometimes. That was a pretty close call, you know. Too bad Razor wasn't there after all. Maybe he ran away when he saw us approach. Strange for him to leave everything behind, though. Everything he's stolen, all the generators are still here. Do you think this trap was for us in particular? Probably not. It was likely more of a general safety precaution. If he had any time to prepare for this, he would have taken the stuff with him. True enough. I had no idea you could make a bomb out of a generator. Then you haven't been with us long enough. If you know how, it's not even that complicated. And Reza somehow figured it out? Apparently so. Does he have any skills pertaining to engineering or electricity? Well, he's worked on cars before and fixes a lot of things back home. I guess that would qualify? He also could have done his own research. Either way, this makes him even more dangerous. At least, we now have a whole building's worth of clues. Ink, can you get to your apartment from here? We'll be busy with this scene for a while. No problem. I'll leave you to your work then. De work then? Uh, leave you to your work then. Good job, Ink. Thanks. 
Oh my gosh, it makes me feel so good that I've actually made a good decision. I no, oh, I feel like I've made all the wrong decisions. <laughs> because we're pretty sure that a sp that a certain someone is dead, and Anna is dead. So, <laughs> oh god. Oh, okay. I'm surprised you called back. Called me. I'm surprised you called me back so quickly. How's the investigation going? Oh, the investigation is going swimmingly, but as you can expect, we need all the help we can get. As usual. With how this case has been going, we've realized we must employ external help. Oh? Yeah, we've requested assistance from one of the cities. We hope they'll send some good investigators our way soon. I see. We were so close today. He could have been in there, you know. Maybe we just came a few minutes too late. And if he knows how to make bombs from generators, who's to say he won't start using them elsewhere? At least he doesn't have any right now, does he? You said all the generators that were stolen are now accounted for. True. Still, this whole case is growing to be too much for a small town police department. I hope you'll get all the help you need. Me too. But right now, you can help us again. Well, what do you have for me? When we searched the building, we found more than the things Razor stole. We also found this bloody bandage. Do you think that's his? That's what we need to find out, but given all we know, it's probably his. So he's wounded. We know he was injured during the fight with his first victim, but whether this is from the same wound or something else, I'm not sure. In any case, you could bring it to the lab for us and find out more. Sure. Next, we have a witness who reported hearing loud bangs during the night. We'd like to send someone to make a follow-up visit. You'll need to confirm the witness statement and see if he has anything new to share. Also, now that we've reclaimed your PDAs, we're going to send, we're going to send one to the archives for analysis. Since they have experience with human artifacts, they're better suited to do, to do it than any of our departments. No problem. And lastly, we have the eggs. It's a relief that we found them unharmed in the building. They're safe and ready to be sent back to the hatchery. Shouldn't we take care of those first? It's not as urgent as you might think. Our eggs are pretty resilient. Being in the care of the hatchery is more, is more an insurance than a requirement. Some people choose to keep them in their own home until they hatch, rather than having the hatchery take care of it. The hatchery has been notified, but they won't be able to send someone for a few hours. I've heard that they'll... The hatchery has been notified, but they won't be able to send someone for a few hours. I've heard that they're really understaffed. If you bring the eggs and the paperwork to them, you'd speed up the process, but it's not an urgent matter. I see. In any case, I'll just leave everything here until I get to it, so feel free to do these tasks as you wish. I know it's laughable that we don't even have a free hand for simple errands. Don't worry about it. By the way, are you planning to attend the summer festival? Should I? It's hard to think about something fun when I'm wrapped up in this investigation. For sure. It's important to take a short rest so you don't lose your head. There's so much to see at the festival, particularly the big fireworks. Dragons enjoy fireworks too? I would think something like that would feel so commonplace, since many of you breathe fire. It's not quite the same. We still appreciate the wonder of colorful bursts in the sky. On the last day, there's always a big fireworks show. Everyone usually attends it. Everyone? Yes, and it has a great tradition behind it. What peeves me is that I'll be on guard duty when it happens this year, so I probably won't be able to see a thing. I'll be sure not to miss it then. Anyways, I should get back to the investigation now. I'll leave this stuff for you here and take care of the rest once I get back, alright? Sure thing. Good luck, Inc. You too. Okay. So, the eggs are safe. They're completely safe here. All this stuff is safe. If there was a witness, Reza might be smart enough to know that there might have been a witness too. If he was smart enough, then that's probably one of the first places we should go. I figure I'll have time for maybe two of these before the end of the day. Um... This, they're safe, they don't need to be taken back immediately, like you said, they're fine. Take the PDA to the library, not very important, as of right now. Um, take the bandage to the facility, I'm probably going to visit the witness and then take the bandage. Those are going to speed up the investigation as well as I can, I think. Let's visit the witness. Oh, oh! Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, it's you. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm working with the police and hope you can answer a few questions. Because I responded to your call for witnesses about last night, right? Yes. Alright, what do you want to know? Can you tell me what happened? Sure. I was running an experiment in my home laboratory, waiting for it to finish. Around 2 a.m., I suddenly hear a few bangs outside. They reminded me of small explosions. It sounded like they were coming from just around the corner. 
I see. Did nothing about this seem unusual to you? Not really. I know I've caused a few similar disturbances with my experiments before. If someone else had to dis take up home experimentation, they certainly have my approval. Besides, I wasn't in any position to abandon the experiment that was running at the time, or else it could have had a similar outcome. Thank you. I think that'll be all. No problem. That was fast, and I was also not ex- I- The weird thing is I was half expecting it to be Lorem, like in the back of my head, but I wasn't, like, I didn't think it was reasonable. I'm not- I will not rest. I am never resting. No. <laughs> okay. And then I said I'd take the bandage, yeah. That's the most sensible thing, I'd say. I hope this is the right place. <laughs> it's just gonna be Damien, I guess. Yep. <laughs> God damn it. Fucking Damien. Can I help you? Yeah, I'm just dropping this evidence off on behalf of the police. I'm the Razor case, right? I already read the memo. Yep, well, here you go. Thanks, I'll get right to it. That was fast. <laughs> So do I get one more? Nope. Okay. I figured I'd get two. That makes sense. Thanks for all your help. Now that the facilities received the bandage, maybe we'll discover something new. I'll take care of the remaining tasks, so if you can take the rest so you can take the rest of the day off. I'm sure you have things to do other than helping the police department. It's no problem really. My trip to your world wasn't supposed to be a vacation. Alright then, see you next time. See you. Okay. After this fateful day, I was glad to finally have some sort of respite. I wandered into the kitchen as I considered tonight's dinner. Should I cook something or order out? When I returned to the living room, I suddenly found my strength leaving me and collapsed to the floor. I haven't eaten in... several days. Have I? <laughs> um... <laughs> that might not be it, though. The next thing I saw was a blurry stone ceiling. As my eyesight slowly returned, I managed to sit up. I was in a cave, and before me stood a familiar, mysterious face. Oh, okay. This is where I get answers, isn't it? I apologize for the violence, but I can assure you it was the easiest way. Sorry. I apologize for the violence, but I can assure you this is the easiest way. Where am I? Is this your hideout? Just a temporary accommodation, so it can be undisturbed for this meeting. Someone else used to live here until recently. Do you know who I am? Well, you're not Reza. Good. What did it take for you to figure that out? Since you're not whispering anymore, I can hear it clearly in your voice. I had a feeling that you couldn't be him since the first time we met, though. Which first time are you talking about? The generator in the cellar when you pushed me. I see. You can call me the administrator. No other humans are supposed to be here, though. I assume that's why you're wearing the mask. You don't want to be recognized. That is correct. Whoever you are, you also saved my life. On more than one occasion. Your presence here doesn't make any sense. You couldn't have come through the portal. The dragons would have noticed. This is where you're wrong. My arrival to the portal is what led the dragons to discover it in the first place. Is that so? When I crawled out from the hole in the earth that hid the portal, there were no guards that discovered me. My appearance exposed the portal, but the dragons didn't know it was there yet. So you arrived even before Reza. That makes you the actual first human to come to this world. That is more true than you might think. Just who are you then? I may have arrived at the portal like you, but my story is very different. Okay, this is incredibly interesting. Okay. Before the fall of humanity, I was an engineer. I was part of a team that was formed to create bioweapons. Our task was to create these bioweapons in a country where the development hadn't yet been regulated or outlawed. These weapons were planned to be a low-cost alternative for poor countries to wage war, so they would no longer have to rely on expensive drones and machines for warfare. I've kind of lost my dialect for this guy, because every time it goes to the black screen, and there's a bunch of white text like this, I cannot keep an accent going the whole time. It just drifts, and my throat doesn't like it. So I'm just doing this. So I'm just going to keep my voice slightly muffled like it's behind the mask, because that's the least I can do. So they lo no longer have to rely on expensive drones and machines for warfare. I was to set up the lab where a bioweapon development would take place. It was a clandestine operation set to be in the middle of the wilderness. The laboratory was an independent research and living unit, and provided everything we needed without having to rely on external resources or even an existing power grid. Everything was to be teleported right into the middle of nowhere, with no traces or paper trail to follow, so international communities and law enforcement would have no idea of our operations. Our only connection to the outside world after a setup 
would have been a two-way portal to our headquarters, who would provide everything we needed. While we could already operate individual people- op, what, what? What am I saying? While we could already teleport individual people, teleporting a whole building was another matter entirely. Our solution was matter compression technology. Incredibly expensive, but operating in the gray market was also very lucrative. The gray market. That's like the black market, but less severe. The technology behind it was much more complicated than even teleportation, despite being based on it. While teleportation works by utilizing black holes with a beginning and an end, compression technology relies on a loop, keeping matter in a short limbo state until the loop is broken. Working with black holes was very complicated to begin with, but this shape required much more finesse, and thus was much more expensive. I was to be sent alone to set up the lab and the portal, so the rest of the team could arrive safely. In case you didn't know, it is possible to use a portal to send someone to a previously defined endpoint. Therefore, it is not required to have a portal at the destination to be sent there, but as you can imagine, this is also very dangerous. A single variable off by a fraction can mean the difference between landing safely at your destination and smothering in space. Of course, my employer did not want anything like that to happen. Not necessarily for my own sake, but because of all the unfathomably expensive equipment I had with me. Regardless, something went wrong anyway. Despite all the checks and safeguards, you can only minimize the risk so much. Even if the risk is a fraction of a fraction, sometimes you're just that unlucky. And sometimes it turns out that your bad luck is a blessing in disguise. I arrived safely somewhere in the jungles of Earth, yet it was not the destination that it had been planned. I knew something was off, but nevertheless I set to work immediately. At the very least, I could prepare the building. I would have shelter, and then I could begin preparations for our project. Getting the portal into working order would take more time, as it was a complicated process that could take several weeks. If things had gone wrong as I suspected, I would at least be able to establish contact with headquarters after the portal had been set up, and I would be able to return. While teleporting the lab to the wrong location was certainly a costly mistake, I was still lucky to have my life. Before long, I discovered the truth about the place I had arrived. While I was still on Earth, it was not the Earth I knew. It was the Earth of 65 million years ago. Is that what this is? Is that what th is that what this is? We knew that by utilizing black holes for teleportation, time travel was a theoretical possibility. It was something even my company didn't dare to attempt, though, as teleportation itself, in itself, was still a very new technology. Yet here I was, 65 million years in the past, with a research station all to myself. The company would revel in the opportunity to study and profit from all the different life forms I could see, if only they knew about them. I spent a few weeks setting up the portal as planned, yet when I tried to re-establish contact with my employer, I was met with silence. Despite the time discrepancy, the portal should have been able to find my companies in the present. For, the black for a black hole, sending something through time is no different than sending something through space. Through space? Oh yeah, my- Oh, too much reading. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I am reading good words. However, when we built the portals, we gave them a specialized configuration. It was only possible to travel through space by aligning them across the time axis. That meant that I, in the past, would still be able to search for portals in the present to connect with. My counterparts in the present, though, would not be able to find me in the past, even if they tried. But I couldn't find them. Not a single one. Even after checking the portal for its function, I determined that, for all intents and purposes, the portals from the company should have been there to connect with. It was then that I had a terrible realization. The portals in the present didn't exist anymore, or no longer operational. Maybe the blunder of teleporting the lab had caused them to reconsider the risks of using this technology. After all, it was already controversial and had been outlawed in several countries. I wouldn't have been surprised if they decided to cut their losses, but it was highly unlikely that they would have immediately shut down every single portal and left me stranded without notice. Portal technology was still being relied on in several places in the present. In my mind, only one possibility remained. Super weapons. Various nations have been using them as bargaining chips for some time. I didn't think the threats had become that serious, but one of them must have launched their weapon and destroyed the majority of Earth. It could have been the result of malfunction, or perhaps the political situation had escalated. Either way, it was not possible for me to establish any means of communication to find out what had really happened. I could have sent myself back into the present with the right coordinates, but this was a risky endeavor, and I also had to ask myself if it was a present I wanted to return to. I was sure that anything was left to... I was sure that if anything was left of our world, the aftermath or a possible retaliatory strike would take care of the rest. <laughs> yeah, that's called mutually assured destruction. That's why we don't use actual nukes in warfare, because then everyone's throwing nukes at each other, and then suddenly the whole world is a scorched earth. In the end, I had to realize that whichever present did exist was likely not the one worth returning to. 
It made my decision all the easier. Instead of returning to a destroyed civilization, I saw an opportunity. Rather than creating bioweapons, I could use the lab to create a new civilization, shaped by my own ideals. I had all the necessary data and the most modern methods and machines at my fingertips. Besides, most of the process had already been automated. In the end, I still used the lab for what it had been created for, fusing human and animal DNA to create beings that were mostly animal, but possessed a greater intelligence that allowed them to learn whatever we wanted them to. Oh, the story's coming together. I don't know if I like how the story's coming together, because it kind of explains away a lot, but... You know what? It explains it in the way I can accept for the story that we've been presented thus far. As I didn't have any animal samples sent with me when I initially arrived, I collected them from the sources available to me. Automated processes mixed the DNA further across the samples. New abilities were added like enhanced armor, flight, and spit weapons to make the new creatures more effective in combat. The result was a number of different species, each tailored and optimized to fill a specific role in the war situation. Hormones allowed for me to speed up their growth, and with the lab's learning program, they could be educated in whatever manner I saw fit. My first concern was self-sufficiency. They needed the kind of knowledge that would enable them to come together as their own independent society. Luckily, the AI that automated all the processes in the lab was more than helpful. I unleashed the first generation of my creation, and as their leader, founded our first village. I thought we could really pull it off, and once I saw that they could survive without my guidance, and also govern themselves, I knew my plan was a success. Okay, hold on, before I continue, need a drink. Uh, Very nice. Drinking coffee because yeah, I had a late life, a late night last night. My throat is killing me after all that talking. That's why I did not try to keep up a freaking dialect for that. When I realized that this new society would eventually be destroyed, I told myself that I would do anything I could to save it. Destroyed? What are you talking about? Haven't you realized where we are? The ch Nope, not even- nope. Ch Chixelbub. Okay, no, I'm gonna try. The Chixelub. Chixelub. Okay, not as hard as I thought. The Chixelub asteroid is headed straight for us. With a diameter of only over 10 kilometers, its impact will create humongous clouds of dust, throwing Earth into a literal dark age. It will block out the sunlight for over a year, killing off many species of plants that rely on photosynthesis to survive. As a result, animals to eat those plants will also vanish and as those who sought sustenance from these herbivores. All in all, 75% of species will vanish, and vanish, and in, tr in terrestrial ecosystems, all animals heavier than a single kilogram will die. That would be 2.2 pounds, in case you didn't know. It'll be the end of everyone who lives here, every single dragon you have seen, unless we do something. We? What am I supposed to do? Do you not wish to save them? I came here to help humanity, now you tell me that the society, this whole world, is also on the brink of extinction? That is the truth. What kind of difference could a single person like me even make to save it? What kind of difference could a single person like me even make to save it? Right now, it's also a single person that presents its greatest threat. Reza, how? In order to stop the comet, we need as much power as possible. We reclaimed all the generators you stole. Besides, how could a few of them be enough to make a difference for something like this? Don't forget that Reza's still out there looking for more. The truth is, I don't know if all the generators we could, we could gather would ever be enough. We only require enough power to divert the comet's path during a crucial moment. But even if this plan is possible, we need every single generator we can get. So my goal hasn't changed. I just need to find Reza. Yes, but you'll need my help, and maybe the help of others. You know that Reza's dangerous, and with his gun he has a clear advantage. I don't think that he would hesitate to kill you if you were in his way. Then what shall we do? Do we know where he is? No, but I think you'll find him soon, and you can count on my support when that happens. I see. There's one thing that still doesn't make sense to me, though. The dragons have myths about you, but they don't know or remember you. They haven't seen any humans for who knows how long. How much time could have passed since you created them, and how? How many generations could it take to forget? Why isn't there proof of your existence? I don't know exactly how long it's been myself. When I realized what time period I was in and what my creation was... I don't know exactly how long it's been myself. When I realized what time period I was in and that my creation was about to be wiped out in the future, I wanted to go to that future and see what they had become. I disabled the portal's time access safeguards and thus enabled it to connect with others in different times. This also included the very same portal in the future. 
With the generator of our lab being able to supply the portal with power for an indefinite amount of time, I was able to travel to any point in the future I wanted to. The entry and endpoint of the black hole would be the same place and the same portal, with the way traveled being just along the time axis. Since I could now search for connection points in any time period, I could look for my own portal in the future and pinpoint the moment its signal stopped. The comet. Sorry, no. The comet. Exactly. I found that specific point in time and traveled to a future that was so that was as close to that event as I could safely manage. After I arrived here, my escape from the portal's hiding place led to its discovery by the dragons, and the, the laboratory were unearthed. I still don't understand how our portal found yours, or why we ended up arriving at this particular time period. The portal you found was no doubt one of my companies. They must have been connected before, so the corresponding data for their connection already existed when you found it. I'm not sure if that could bypass the anti-time travel safeguards, though. Was it completely operational when you found it? No, it took a little bit of tinkering. Probably jumping the hardware safeguard in the process. Now, consider the connected portals travel along the time axis together. The data for their beginning and end points are adjusted automatically. Otherwise, there wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to... <sighs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to transport anything from one place in the world to the other without also sending it through time. Since these two portals must have been connected at some point, the corresponding data for the connection between those two portals already existed. I, I feel like he's reiterating this. I feel like he literally just said this. When using the same connection without changing any of the data, this would mean that despite the time discrepancy between those two portals, time still progressed linearly for them. I'm not sure I understand. Let me try to rephrase that. The portal you found and my own share a connection. However, while the connection is locked to a certain place, which is wherever the portal is at that moment, it is not connected to a specific point in time. For us and the physical machines of the portals, time passes linearly and we can't do anything about that. However, for the black holes, this isn't the case. Just as their entry and endpoints can be in different places, they can also be in different times. In order to not send something through the through time when we just want to transport something from one portal to another, the portals are anchored together in such a way that time data is automatically synchronized. Essentially, this means that ever since you arrived in this world, the same amount of time that has passed for you has also passed in the place you came from. I see. So despite being in different time periods, time still passes linearly on both sides of the portals. Otherwise, it would not have been possible for you to send messages back and forth to each other. If they were not synchronized, the portals on both sides would stay connected, not only to a single point in space, but also to a single point in time, thus making proper two-way communication impossible. However, this is only possible through the connection that has already been forged. If we wanted to, we could also use our portal to send you back to your own time period, but to a moment before Reza even arrived here. But that would mean there would be two of me, right? Wouldn't that cause a time paradox? I can only tell you that it would work. No one has studied time travel before, though... No one has studied time travel before, though. So if there are any con- I can only tell you that it would work. No one has studied time travel before, though. So if there are any consequences, then I'm not sure of them. Most likely, an entirely new timeline would be created. There would be a timeline without any call together, and a new one, there would be two of you. This is becoming way too complicated. I actually hate it. I apologize. To come back to your original question, I'm not sure how much time passed between I left my newborn society and now. Since the portal was not designed for time travel, I have no way of knowing how the variables translated to our perception of time. It could have been thousands or even millions of years. How could the portal, or even its power source, still be operational after all this time? The portal receives its power from the generator in the lab. These units were fitted with the absolute best technology we had to offer. It was designed to provide sustainable power completely independent from any already existing network or power lines. It gains energy from many sources, sun rays, Earth's heat, and movement, just to name a few. Keep in mind, it had to power a whole laboratory and research station, while also providing the energy required for all of its inhabitants and the associated energy expenditures. Taking its power from Earth itself, a generator like this could continue providing power to the lab indefinitely. Speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single dinosaur since I arrived? It seems that the Dragon's society expanded over the whole continent. Many still hunt on their own for sustenance, and as such, the original species they were based on have mostly vanished, and, as in direct competition, ours proved to be far superior. Although, they have probably taken measures against having big predators roam their cities and vintages. Mm -hmm. Gonna keep that one. Yet, while the dragon population has increased tremendously, I have 
I have found that by and large, their society as a whole has not changed much. Is that why everything here looks like it was made for humans? I suppose so. The learning program I initially used gave them knowledge about things and how to create them. Yet, of course, those are only human inventions and designs. Did they ever once stop to think that they should adjust how certain things look? A lot of the furniture and objects I've seen look very impractical for a dragon. I was surprised at that too, but I have an explanation for this phenomenon. Don't forget that their genome was designed by an AI program to, ma to make them effective bioweapons. The idea was to have them indoctrinated at a young age. After reaching adolescence, their learning capacity would be greatly diminished. This resulted in subjects that would stay loyal and unlikely to change at their desired behaviors. Instincts also play a role. I imagine they are very much at odds with their learned behavior. Instincts in animals never change, and instinctual behaviors always be there. If a given trait has been programmed into their genome as an instinct, it's not very likely to change, even through numerous generations. We can see the result of this here. While I initially made them learn a certain set of values and knowledge, I have found that the expression of these ideas has hardly changed. And after I was gone, each new generation learned from its elders and much of the initial knowledge and information was retained through all its time. Their genome as a whole did change, however, which was unavoidable over time. If they had been used as bioweapons as intended, they would have been nothing more than an army of identical clones. While I can see subtle changes in behaviors as a result, some traits are still very much present in them. They are, con they are content with only what they have and don't strive for more. They don't innovate or change, so technological breakthroughs and new inventions are a rarity. It's quite the opposite, really. They very much value tradition in their ways, which have not changed very much in all these years. I see. How much time do we have left to stop the comet? In a few weeks, the comet will pass the moon, and its gravity field will point the comet's trajectory towards Earth. This is when we need to be ready. If we strike then, we only need to minimally affect its path in order for the comet to pass Earth safely. It won't be enough time for the inhabitants of the world to prepare. It won't be enough time. <laughs> Give me a moment. This is so much talking and so much mumbo jumbo. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna take a moment to talk. Normally, this is all so very foreign. This is weird. The idea that suddenly there's time travel involved, and not even like you went back in time or forward in time, or someone else went back in time or forward in time and changed stuff. This this man went back in time, and then went forward in time, in order to be able to save what he did when he went back in time. <laughs> okay, um, let's just let's just try to get this over with. I'm I'm giving up on the muffling. It's actually getting really annoying, and I honestly am worried it's not even going to come out good in the audio. So I don't want to keep doing it just in case. It won't be enough time for the inhabitants of this world to prepare for as it steals our greatest assets. And I'm giving up on the dialect entirely now. It's so much talking, I can't handle it. So it's all about raising the generators, isn't it? Indeed. By the way, I fixed the portal in case we need to use it. Did you break it to prevent me from being sent away? No, that wasn't me. Razor better not use it to escape. Trust me, the portal is our greatest asset. I have programmed it with emergency coordinates. If you should find yourself in a hopeless situation and feel there's no other way out, go to the portal. I have made sure only you will be able to use them. I'll keep that in mind. So, what's your plan? What do we do now? I will resume my work and you will continue yours. Find Reza. The administrator turned to leave. Wait, what's all- what's, what's, ugh, what's with all the secrecy? Why are you still wearing that mask? Why don't we pull our resources together and you show me your hideout? Don't you think it would be better if you were completely frank with me? No, not now. Okay, I'm gonna trust him because he's a time traveler, but holy crap. A second later, the figure had already vanished into darkness outside. <sighs> I'm probably going to end it pretty soon. We're coming up on two hours of recording now. Uh, and honestly, my throat is getting hoarse. I, uh, I can't keep this up too much. I'll probably, I'll probably record again tomorrow. I'll probably start working on editing this episode as soon as I'm done, but I'm gonna see if I can't wait to get back to my apartment at least. I'd like to leave off there so that I'm in a place where I feel like I know what's happening. When I followed, I realized that I wasn't sure how to get back to my apartment. Surrounded by trees and the blanket of night, it was hard to make out where I stood. After wandering through the underbrush, I realized that the lights on the horizon had to be coming from the village, and I made my way back. I returned to my apartment without much trouble. When I looked at the clock, I was surprised to see how much time had passed. Not having anything left to do for the day, I soon fell into a deep slumber. Okay. I'm gonna save here. This has been 
a roller coaster. And the worst part is, I haven't even figured out potentially the worst part of it. I have not yet, <laughs> I've not yet figured out who the casualty at the hatchery slash orphanage was, and that is paining me so much. And I can't help but feel like the game is keeping me from allowing to try and spend time with this particular dragon until the storyline can progress to the point where we get the autopsy, and then I find out who it is. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to not think about that for a little while. I really hope you enjoyed this. It was a little lackluster in terms of gaming content. A lot of talking, but at the very least I hope you can enjoy the narrative, because this is truly a fantastic game. And without further ado, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you whenever I next post, if I do.